Well, welcome. My name is Helen Jennings, um, a Stamping Up demonstrator based here in the UK. And I'm here to answer the question, what shall we make today? And I think today we'll have a go at a pop-up slider card. So I've already cut some bits and pieces out in front of me here. And I've got some stamp sets and things ready to use. So what I've got here is I've got a piece of, um, a quarter of a piece of white cardstock. So um, for metric cardstock, that's 14.9 by um, 9, 10.5. I've got a quarter piece of real red cardstock, again, 14.9 by 10.5. I've got a piece of designer series paper, and this is from the very cute snail mail sweet and it's the paper that has got all the little um, blushing bride hearts on it um, and I've also got a couple of pieces of card here this one is 12.9 centimeters um, by 8.3 that seems a bit of an odd um, width but I just wanted it to be slightly smaller than the piece it's going behind so that's 8.3 by 12.9 and all these measurements will be upon my blog post and um, that you'll be able to go and check out and then I've got a scallop circle in real red and a stitch circle in white so those are my bits and pieces that I've got gathered ready to create this card now what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to take this designer series paper and I am going to stick it to this piece of card but I'm not going to stick it all the way round <clears throat> I just want it to be adhered down the sides so I think the first thing actually we'll do is I'm going to take a ruler and I'm going to measure a little box so we can see exactly where we need to put our tape so what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure in two centimeters on each side so that will be two centimeters on this side and then at eight and a half so we put a little line at two centimeters and eight and a half two eight and a half so let's just join that up and this bit won't be seen so we're not particularly worried about these pencil lines and then coming in this side we're going to measure two from the top and two from the bottom so that again will be two centimeters here and then down here it will be 12.9 oh, around about there so two and 12.9 and let's just lightly come across there and now we have this sort of little grid and what we want to do is we want to put some tape so that we're sticking our paper on the top so we're going to bring it down the side of these lines just here and then another bit on the outside I do the same here, bring it down this line. You could equally put glue here if you want to, but I don't want it any risk of it oozing anywhere, which is why I've used tape. You could also use your um, stamping seal or your stamping seal plus. Now let's just take the backs of this tear and tape come here caught a bit of something or other underneath that tape just there That's it. 
shoe. Not exactly exciting viewing, watching you taking the backs of tapes, but there we are, we've done. Now what we're going to do is so you can see that it's going to stick all around the edge, but it's not going to stick, stick in that centre part, and that is exactly what we want to happen. So let's line this up. Stick that down. So there we have our piece of cardstock um, stuck on all four sides but not stuck in the middle. We're now going to take our trimmer and you can do this with the pencil and ruler and um, knife or whatever works best for you. Um, but I'm going to <coughs> measure down even though we don't need to worry because we've got our measurements on our blade so we're going to lay this at the two centimeter mark just here and I've actually got the metric um, arm on my trimmer so what I want to do is I want to line up my line on the edge of my blade can you see that line on the edge of the blade with the two centimeter um, mark on my trimmer arm so the metric arms are available um, separately and then I want to take this down to two centimeters short of the bottom so that's going to be 12.9 so that's just there so I'm going to cut all the way down here from two centimeters to 12.9 and then I can swing this round because we're stopping short of two centimeters each way so if that is still at 12.9 doesn't look as if it's moved very much I'm going to take it up until it meets with two and then on the bottom I'm going to rest this at two centimeters and I'm going to take it between those two lines so from that cutting line to that cutting line and hopefully yes we should find that we have a nice panel just there so now what we're going to do is we're going to put our cutting blade down to the bottom so we've cut just on these three sides we should actually find if we lift this back we can if we want to take this piece of paper out altogether so that it just has a red piece just there which is why we haven't stuck it down so I will do that with my paper snips to score across here first because that will make that easy so rather than cutting between the two lines I'm going to score between the two lines going to fold that piece of card that way I've got this piece of paper coming this way and then I'm just going to trim that off across there now this panel that we've got in the front here now measures 14.9 minus 4 so in my estimation that means it should measure 10.9 centimeters it does indeed now we want to trim that we want to score that at the halfway point of that um, panel so let's rest it like here so that is actually going to be 5.45 or just a big a smidge short of five and a half. So let's score that just there. And then that is the halfway point of that panel just there. Okay, so we've got our front frame. We've got our 
pop-up piece in the middle. We could have wanted to use this paper. We could have left it, we could have stuck it down completely and left it on there if we wanted to. We could also use it um, and cut it down and make sort of little mat front and back if we wanted to. Um, but I think I'm just going to leave this one red. So now what we want to do is we're going to take this panel here and actually I was um, obviously having a um, maths hiccup day because I've cut this to 8.3 and it actually wants to be 6.3 so let's trim that down when I put the blog measurements when I put the measurements on my blog I will ensure that that is correct that's better isn't it I only took off two centimeters I needed to take off four I forgot to take some off for each each end each side so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop some tear and tape on this tab. So I've got this piece here that is now 6.3 by 10 point, sorry, 12.9. Um, and I've scored it at one and a half centimetres across this bottom bit just here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some tear and tape on that bottom tab. So we have it so that we have 12.9 by 6.3 scored on this end at one and a half centimetres and I've stuck some tape to that end. Let's take that tape off of there. So then what we're going to do is we're going to add that piece there to that piece just there and that will make our pulley up tab to make our mechanism work. So what we do need to do is just cut a little hole out of that end piece. Now you can do that using um, a circle punch it doesn't really matter what size circle punch you're using. I'm just going to allow that to flop down there a minute. I'm just going to take that in there and take a little snip out of there. So that will now sit there. It sits just slightly proud. And then we're going to be able to put, punch a hole in there and use some sort of ribbon as a pull tag. So now what we want to do is we want to stick this card front to this card base and when we lift up we want to have our little greeting in there. So what I'm going to do is take my pencil and just gently draw a line down there Let's lift it up and sort of do a bit of a pencil line just there because now we've got a vague area that we're going to be able to stamp a greeting into. So I'm going to take the greeting to the woman who does it all with grace and wisdom because this is going to be my card that I'm creating now for my Festive Friday Design Team Challenge card for International Women's Day, Women's Day. So let's line that up nice and straight and we will stamp that in there like that. my razor and just rub out those pencil lines so they won't necessarily be visible in the finished card 
Would you see if I'm wobbling you as I rub this out? There we go. Right, so now what we want to do is we want to add some adhesive around this edge just here. And I'm actually going to make it foam tape. Just to give it a little bit of height. Phone tape strips. And we will take them. Find the edge here. Let's do another one. down the edge there some down the edge there and some across the bottom here so let's take the backing off of those One's going to come most of the way round. Lay that down. And again, we need to there and now when we pull that up we have our little greeting in there and then we have our scalloped circle that is going to sit on there and that will lift up like this when that comes all together so now we want some decoration for our circle and some ribbon in the end of our pulley tab. So I'm going to take my punch just here with its very useful little hole punch just there. Could have gone in the other side and had the wider punch. And somewhere I've got some of this gorgeous Red and white ribbon that actually comes from the Playful Pets Sweet. This is the Playful Pets ribbon combo. I'm going to thread that through there. I should have grabbed my ribbon scissors. White twine also comes from the snail mail combo combination if you get some white and some blushing bride in there we could have used either for this card let's just anchor that down slightly while I tie a bow across it give it a tug and tie it a bit tighter
my rib and scissors and to tweak that off. So that's that piece all done, just waiting for its scalloped um, circle to come on the front. So let's look at that. So I've actually got the Dressed to Impress um, suite here and I'm going to get some contents of this white, basic white card. And I'm going to stamp some shoes and some flowers and a lipstick and I'm going to use some memento to do that because we're then going to colour them in let's give that a, a key So using some black memento, let's have one, two, we'll have a pair of shoes, we'll have a lipstick. And we'll have some of these flowers. And we have got dies that are going to cut these out for us. Which is always helpful. My real red um, stamping blend because that's the main colour we've got in the background. I've also got some black and some silver and a touch of mango melody. So let's see how we go. I'm going to take the dark red first of all and let's come around the edge of this shoe. In. Give the light red as always with these things when you're doing this at home you have much more time to concentrate on not going out of the lines and just going to come in on that inside edge. But I'm going to take a little bit of smoky slate and a piece to that and then I think we'll have Going to use some light smoky slate for that heel. Let's look at our other shoe. With the light blue red, just blend that together. And 
again I'll just add a little touch of um, the slight smoky slate to that insole and to the heel. Right, let's have a look at our lipstick. Again, let's come in with the dark real red. And then we'll add in some light. This top bit just here, I'm going to do to add in some smoky slate to bring in the colour lifter Ooh, wrong end just bring that all over The colour of the lifter is just sort of blending solution and we'll just lift the colour slightly. And then I'm going to come in on this sort of the main bottom piece of the lipstick with some black for the casing. light basic black and take that all over to add a little bit of more of Okay, and now we've got the little flowers, so I think we'll come in with some light mango melody just in the middle. So they're like roses, aren't they? I think we'll stick with our red. Red. Let's do this other one. Again, come in with the light red. And um, I think we'll go old olive, possibly with the leaves. I'm just going to keep it to the light old olive, I think. Right, so let's just dig out the dies that we need here. We need shoe and the lipstick and the two sets of flowers. So there's the flower on its own. There's the flower. Two flowers with their leaves. So I'm just going to run those through the die cutting machine.
have to, I've only got one shoe die, so it would always have to be two. But, uh, Lots of flowers are so close together they would overlap. So there we have a lipstick, one lot of flowers, one shoe, so let's line up, put those down roughly by the time I've got it over to the machine I've probably wiggled a little bit so I'll line them up again. All those dies in my little magnetic bowl so they don't wander. Now I think we'll take this large squiggly die and perhaps some of that dotty die and we'll just lay down a bit of background onto our circle looks like some of the blocks have wandered slightly oh no I can see the one I'm looking for now it's right at the back but that will fit on there so let's take that real red ink pad and this circle We'll have a splodge coming this way and a splodge coming that way. And then with this memento, just going to add in a few spots. Sorry, wobbling you around. So let's stick that circle to the scalloped circle. And then let's have a little look how we want these to go. We've got our lipstick. Got a pair of shoes. And we've got some flowers. It's rather cute, isn't it? So I think let's lift these off for a minute, let's put that flower about there and let's bring our lipstick, bring that across there and these flowers will have Ink on some mini dimensionals in the front here. And then we'll have our shoes. So the shoe in the back. And 
and stick down and the shoe in the front we'll put up um, some dimensionals just take our scissors and cut a little thin piece from the edge to go down the heel just to give that a bit of support you need support when you're wearing your stilettos it's been a long time since I've worn stilettos so let's have that coming just here so we want our circle so that this is sitting just slightly a smidge above the bottom of that panel but obviously we don't want it sticking down on either side and we don't want it to stick any further than there so I think I'm going to put a dimensional on there and one on the bottom and a couple sort of in from the side so hopefully that will Yeah, about position right we'll have that just there and then that should slide up and down beautifully I think I might just take a little piece of this so we trimmed this it was just under five and a half so if I make this just under five and then I'm going to trim a little bit off the edge make it six so that it will sit in there with a bit of a panel around the edge and I think that is going to finish that off slightly better it needed something on that red background there we go cool just here and we have to the woman who does it all with grace and wisdom. Let's have a little look in our shiny box. In amongst these black spots we could add a few sparkly red dimensionals. Possibly just add going to grab a strip of real red card and using my kiss punch, let's add in few hearts they will go upside down when it's lifted up <clears throat> but I don't think that will matter let's add one two And another little one down there. There we go. A pop up slider easel card. All ready just to pop in a standard size envelope to send off.
to a woman you know who does it all with grace and wisdom. So I hope you've enjoyed that. And do come back again for another What Shall We Make video another day.